my name is Kerry and I'm going to be talking to you about how we've used sociocracy to um, develop and implement our independent democratic school. Um, we are defined as democratic, but I'll talk a bit more about what that actually means as I, as I talk to you. Um, so I'm the principal there, but I also spend the majority of my time in the classroom there um, working with the kids. So I have quite a, a strong role in the democratic side of it with the students. Um, please excuse any mistakes or hesitations I have this morning. It's very early where we are. So um, yeah, and feel free to ask any questions as I go. So just a bit of background to start off with. So um, before we developed our school, there was a, a group of parents, teachers, community members who were looking for something different. So we're located in Townsville, which is a regional city located in North Queensland, Australia. So we're, we're up the, the top of Australia and our region has state schools, a grammar school and various religious denomination schools, but nothing of, no other choice apart from that. So a group of parents and like-minded community members and teachers formed an association called the Townsville Independent School Association. And they were basically just looking for um, a bit more choice in what they could offer their, their kids in in schooling and a lot of the feedback we've had since being open is that um, parents are really grateful to have that choice. They're grateful that there's something else if they choose to send their kids to. Um, so this independent school association worked for about four years. Um, during that four year period, they used a sociocratic model in all the development issues, um, the decision-making processes during that time as they were working towards what actually opening that school would look like. Um, there was a availability for everyone to be involved in that decision-making process, no matter their experience or um, what they had to bring to the table. Everyone's voice was heard and consensus was, was sought. Um, during that process to allow to allow everyone to feel comfortable with those decisions that were being made. Um, so during that process, um, and as part of that process, the members of the association came up with and agreed upon their vision statement. So their vision statement is empowering children through choices in education. So already we could really see that that democratic sociocratic model was something that was really valued through by this community, by the people who were wanting this school to open, um, wanting everyone to have a voice from, from the students through to the teachers, through to the parents, through to community members, so that everyone was valued when this school opened. They also came up with a mission statement, which um, had three elements. So the first was to establish a progressive independent democratic school in Townsville by 2019 with one class of 15 children. Um, they wanted to expand by one class per year from 2020 to 2023 with primary school enrollment numbers not exceeding 100 children and to develop a secondary school during 2023 and onwards with enrollment numbers not exceeding 100 children. And the motto for the association was a voice and choice in learning. So that's been the big thing the whole way through is to make sure that everyone involved has a voice and a choice. So everyone is heard and everyone has a choice and that choice may be to consent to something and that choice may be to not consent to something and that that's okay and we will work through that, um, we'll work through that process uh, together. Um, so in Kindle Village School, we did open this year. So we opened our doors to our first cohort of students this 
in January this year. We um, started with 15 students. We have an age range from prep to year three. So across that age range, all those students have a choice and a voice in their learning. They're all equal members of our community and they all have an equal say in decisions that are made. From the very beginning, obviously, we had lots of parents involved in that beginning process um, in terms of being on the association and getting the school to opening point. So those parents wanted to maintain that involvement. So we still have lots of parent involvement um, in various formats. It could be things like volunteering, but they also have a, we also use a circle model and I'll talk a bit more about that, which allows those different um, aspects, those different elements of our school to have their voice and then bring those voices together to make those big decisions or even the little decisions as well. So our philosophy of education is founded on democratic principles with the belief that the people affected by a decision should have a voice in that decision. Um, in our school community, we know that students are affected by the decision, parents are affected by decisions, um, teachers, staff members, community members, uh, the wider community where we're located is affected by decisions that we make. So we want to make sure that all of those people are having a voice in those decisions that we make. And in terms of that philosophy that we have of our school being democratic, at our school children can explore their interests at their own pace in their own way. Children are guided with kindness and respect. It allows their freedom to discover and we find that they're really thriving as they learn. So in Kindle Village School came up with its own vision, mission and motto. Our vision is that all children have the ability to be capable and free thinking contributors of their world when offered a voice and a choice in learning. So we really wanna make sure that these children are contributing, that they understand that this is their world as well and they need to have a voice in it. And we encourage that on a daily basis with them. We have a mission to ignite the hearts and minds of our students through the creation of a vibrant and engaging learning environment that provides structure for self-directed learning. And our motto is liberty, autonomy and joy. So I'll talk a bit about now that the school is up and running, so we're, we're open, we've hit the ground running, we um, use the school circle model to decide those operational things that are happening with the school. So you can see I've got up on the screen, a this is our school circle model that was developed. Um, you can see that we've got various committees and, and different circles that um, have their decision-making process that informs those big operational decisions that we make. So um, we have our in Kindle school employees in a circle and they get to um, talk about those daily operations of the school. Um, and that can be from teachers down to maintenance staff, gardeners, cleaners, all of those people. We have an advisory board. So they, um, they're just a panel of experts that we've engaged to just talk to us about big decisions. So give us some advice on those big decisions. And we've engaged people from the community in that group. So we've got experts in um, areas such as um, business, education, accounting, legal. Um, we are co-located on a university campus. So in Queensland, our major unit, in Townsville, sorry, our major university is James Cook University and they um, have agreed to co-locate us. So we are on their campus and we have access to all of their facilities. And we have members of the JCU community on our advisory board because we 
are so linked to them, we want to make sure that the decisions that we make, that they're happy with those decisions as well. We still have our board. So our board is the decision making part of our school. And that has come out of the independent school association that started this whole process. So that includes the secretary, a treasurer and general committee members, as well as a president and vice president. So they're the circle that really all the information gets fed back to, all the decisions get fed back to, and they approve decisions as we go. We have um, our parents and friends committee. So parents and friends meet regularly to discuss things that are happening in the school, um, bring up any issues that are happening in our school. They take on aspects of our school, such as fundraising, um, things like volunteering, organising, all that sort of stuff as well. And all of that information gets fed back to other circles. So, um, for example, I sit in on the Parents and Friends Committee and I can feed that information back to other, other circles if I need to feed back to the advisory board to ask a question or to the employees to let them know, let them know something that the Parents and Friends Committee are feeling or would like to make a decision on. Um, the, the big circle that's um, kind of underway at the moment and probably the most, I guess, pressing and important one for me being on the ground every day is our student circles. So like I said before, we have 15 students from prep to grade three. So our kids range in age from about, we've got four year olds to eight year olds in our school. Um, and I'm extremely proud so far of how our student circle is functioning, particularly given the fact that we've only been up and running for approximately just over 10 weeks. Um, so one term. Um, in the beginning, our student circle, the students wanted to, they all, all wanted to bring something to the circle. So it was quite a drawn out process as they learnt what were the things that we really needed to make decisions on. They wanted to tell us everything. They wanted to bring every little decision to the circle to have everyone help make choices. And that was quite hard to start with, but they very quickly learnt that um, that wasn't working for them. I think it was probably a reaction to suddenly having a voice at school. A lot of our students have either not been in formal education or they have come from state schools, um, private schools, where this just wasn't a process for them. They, they weren't part of that decision-making process. They weren't given a big voice in their learning. They, they didn't make choices about what they were learning. They were told what they were learning. They were told how their school ran. Rules were made for them. They didn't have a choice in those rules. So I think early on there was a big response and they, you could see that they really valued having that voice suddenly and wanted to share it all and wanted to say everything that they were feeling. Um, that has that has settled. So initially, as they got to know each other, there was there was little teething issues, but they have settled and they don't feel the need to tell us everything anymore. Um, so now that they've got to know each other and they've settled into that process, the school circle really has become about making decisions and um, getting ideas out there. So these students have amazing ideas that they want to share. They have amazing ideas for what they want to learn. They have amazing ideas for what they want to see in their school. So that's kind of where we're at at the moment in terms of our circle is that it's become a place for ideas and decision making. So every day we have a school circle. 
Some days that circle may be more in depth than others, depending what is going on, but the students always know that at some point in the day, they will have that chance to have their voice heard. Students may call a school circle. So if they're feeling that there's an issue that they need to address, then they will come and see me and they will say, can we have a school circle so I can talk to my classmates about this issue? And we absolutely facilitate that for them. School circles happen every day, like I said, so we will sit together. We will actually be in a circle so that everyone can see each other's face. And we will ask who needs to talk. And they are very, they have learned very quickly how to go through that process in terms of needing to listen really carefully to everyone's opinion, whether you agree with that opinion or not. They're really good at just stopping and listening and hearing what the other people are saying. And I think that comes from, I think that really good listening comes from the fact that they know they don't have to interrupt. They know they don't have to jump in because they understand that I can wait and I can listen because I know that I'm, I know that my chance is coming. I know that I'm not going to be missed. My voice will be heard in this process. So they know that they've got the freedom to stop, to really listen to what the other people are saying because my chance will come and people will listen to me. I don't have to force my opinion into this conversation. Um, I think they've really taken ownership of it. So they really understand why we're doing this, why we have this sociocratic model and why and how it helps our school to be a harmonious place. So they are understanding that a way to deal with issues or a way to deal with problems is to use our voice. So instead of getting into arguments with the student, they'll come to me and say, can we have this circle? So they understand that maybe they're not gonna sort it out with the person that they're having an issue with and that there's all these other little experts in their class that they can bring together who can help with the issues that they've got and help with those decisions and help with deciding whether rules fit our school or what rules we should have. So they're really good at understanding and knowing why we have this process. And I can see that because they're, they're wanting to instigate the process. They're wanting to um, really use it every day. Um, so the aim of our school circles is we want those students to feel like they're valued. We want them to know that we really see them as people. We don't see the, the relationship as a teacher student. I'm not in charge of them. I'm there to guide them. I'm there to facilitate them. But really we're, we're equals in this process, um, especially being such a new school. We, we all know that we're learning. They know that I'm learning and that this is, this is a fluid process. We need to make decisions because we are so brand new. So we use a first name basis with students and teachers to really cement that relationship. We don't have a uniform. Um, we have flexible seating arrangements so that, that they can make decisions on how they want to learn, where they want to sit. Um, and I always make sure that we're, we're on the same level. So it's, it's much more me sitting with them. So if they're on the floor, I'm on the floor. If they're at a table, then I'm at a table. It's, it's not me standing over them. And, I'm not the boss, I guess, is, is the big thing. Um, we, when a decision is being made, so when we have our school circles, we make sure that anyone who has an opinion on that or anyone who wants to share on that has that voice. And once we've heard everyone's voice and we've had those discussions, we have a process of consent or not consent so we go around our circle and the students will say, I consent to that decision or I don't consent to that decision. And we found very early on that they were 
they were quite confident in not consenting. So I was kind of expecting early on that they would all just sort of say, oh yeah, whatever, whatever my friends are saying, I'll say that. But they were very strong in saying, I don't, I don't consent to that. And they've learnt that that's okay. Like we value that. And they've learnt that I can say that and I can explain why. And that's a really amazing process of, of valuing other people's opinions that it's okay not to agree with that. And when students don't agree, we have that process of developing strategies to deal with that. And they're understanding that, that that process of consent, that they can consent to something, even if they're still feeling uncomfortable about it, that there's levels of consent. So they're starting to see that I might consent to it. I'm not entirely comfortable with it, but I don't want to, I don't want to limit my friends or um, I'm willing to try something to see how it feels. Um, so when the students not consented, we found that it, it, it's basically forcing the other students to consider viewpoint and how the other person's viewpoint is, um, what the other person's viewpoint is because they've got to consider, well, how can I make this other person comfortable? How can I, how can I make this other person feel comfortable with um, agreeing with this decision? I'm just gonna click here. So um, I've got a little feedback. So we're really enjoying this process. We're really finding that it's turning out to be bigger than what we thought. So parents especially have really embraced this sociocratic model and many are taking the concepts into their, their own homes. So you can see on this page, I've got a little quote here from one of our parents, which says, as a parent, I can see firsthand the impact that, sociocratic, that the sociocratic model and school circles are having on my son. He uses language that is consistent with choice and consent. In such a short time frame, he's really embraced the ideals and knows that there, if there are issues, they talk them through with the circles. He's even asked us to have family circles and it's really spreading. So the language that these students are using is, is incredible. They would put a lot of adults to shame in the way that they can deal with issues and the way they can have discussions. They've really embraced the language of sociocracy. So they will talk to each other about things not being fair or they will say things like not everyone's agreed to that not everyone's consented they use the word consent as it is a daily word it's in their vocabulary they're confident in using it um and they're really confident in in doing that with each other without my input as well so they're embracing it they're taking it and they're they're spreading it out to the world around them I've got a little, some little videos here of some of our students giving feedback. So I questioned these students and I asked them why, why they think school circles are good for our school. Um, our first little boy that we've got here, very early on when we, we opened the school, we were sitting there all together one day in one of our circles and he got very excited and he said, he started talking to his friends and saying, guess what guys, I know, I know a big, big secret about our, about our teacher Kiri. Like I know a really big secret. And I was like, oh goodness, what could this possibly be? And he was very excited. And he said to his classmates, guess what? Kiri used to be a real teacher. So we, we noticed really early on that their perception of what schooling should look like was very, very traditional. So a lot of these kids had never been in a mainstream schooling environment, but the idea of what a school should be was very ingrained in them. And they would play teacher games where there was an angry yelling teacher up the front of the class and the kids were sitting in rows and um, the teacher was yelling and making the rules and telling them what to do and not listening to them and do this, do that. 
And that surprised us. That surprised us that that was the, the vision that they had of what school should be because they weren't in that kind of environment. And we realised, my goodness, this is, this is really ingrained in them. This is a really entrenched idea that a school is not democratic. A school is there's bosses, there's leaders, and they tell you what to do. And you don't have a choice as a student. You just have to do what that cranky, grumpy, yelling teacher has to do. So we really wanted to make sure that that wasn't the message that they had, that they really do understand that you have a voice. We are equals. Your voice is valued and respected in this process. So I'll play, um, I'll play Liam's little video for you. Hopefully you can hear this and see this. Where are we? William, why do you like school better? Cause it's nice so we can make agreements and sort it all out. And I like the like, it's like consenting. Do we like have our teachers get us to like do something? Like pick something and we have the consent on it, I guess. Why do you like the idea of consent? Because it's nice and it makes it more fair and like voting. Because I don't really like voting because it's more fair and because uh, everybody gets to do it and the person is higher than the opinions. So you can really see that language coming through and their ability to understand the difference between having a voting system and being sociocratic. So this child really understands that if majority wins, that there's still a group of people who aren't happy with that decision, who aren't comfortable with that decision, that it's just majority wins and he understands that that's, um, that that's not fair. They've really got a sense of fairness and unfairness through this process, um, which we think is, is fantastic. I've got another little video here for you. Same question I asked this student. So I asked her um, why she thinks school circles are important for our school. So again, you can see that, that that language is really embedded. She really understands the process and, and why we're doing it and that, that they feel that real safety in, in being able to share their voice and to, to have a different voice to the people around them, that it's okay to not agree that we can, we can work through that, that I'm not going to decide for them, I'm not going to tell them what we're doing. I'm not going to make them do anything that they're not comfortable with, um, that we're there to make sure that they're feeling comfortable in their, in their school, in their learning process, and in, in all the aspects of what's happening in their school. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically how we're using sociocracy at the moment. So that, that school circle process, we've been we're in the very early stages, but we're, we're already seeing just like incredible benefits in terms of um, what's happening in the school um, from parents, students, community members are having a voice. 
and we can only see it growing and expanding and as these students go out and already are sharing this language, sharing these ideas with family members, that, that this idea is going to grow and going to spread and become a really entrenched part of, of our school community. Yeah. Um, any questions? Does anyone have any questions? I've also, I said earlier that I've got my business development manager in here, Kerry, as well. There she is, I can see her now. So um, she was involved in the process from the very early beginning stage in terms of the association and the development of the school. Whereas I've come into the school a bit more, um, a bit later. So as the school, the actual school part of it has started. So does anyone have any questions? So like? Kerry, if you could uh, close the, the share, the, the yeah. video sharing, yeah. go Perfect. into the gallery view here and um, Feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question or you can put a question in the chat. Thanks, Alan. It's, it's very inspiring. We're very inspired and we're, um, we're, we're getting lots of great feedback from, from parents who are saying that they're really noticing a change in their, their kids. Their kids are happy to come to school. Their kids are excited about learning. Their kids are feeling safe and secure and valued and really respected in the school. Hi, John. John. Hi, uh, I got into the session late and I missed where the school is. So we're in um, North Queensland in Australia, up in a place called Townsville. So um, a, a regional city, not huge, but we don't have a lot of options in terms of schooling. So at the moment there's state schools or there's one grammar school and um, various religious denomination schools. So nothing, this is the first of its kind in terms of this kind of schooling in North Queensland. Great, thank you. Um, I can see Melva's question in terms of school rules. So the school rule process, we, we did start with students making all of the rules. So they would sit in that school circle process and they would discuss issues that they thought might pop up and what the rules would be. And in the early stages, as things happened, we would have school circles and say, okay, this has happened. What are we, what's our decision or our consensus going to be on this issue? Um, there is certain rules that I have to put in place. We are in, located in quite a, a bushy area with lots of trees. The kids do lots of tree climbing and we, we do have things like snakes and things like that that we have to be aware of. So there are some major rules that I've put into place, but I've explained it to them um, very carefully and said that these safety rules are in place only because I'm older and I understand a bit better the safety issues. But most of the rules that are in place, there's not a lot of them. And they're basically just about respecting other people, respecting other people's opinions, respecting other people's personal space, and just, just looking after each other is the basic rule. So just making sure that you're, you're not doing anything that's going to do you, do you find the opposite, people who are resistant or having a bad experience? Um, we haven't so far. So the kids especially, you're exactly right. They were like ducks to water. It was, it was, the process was so easy for them. They, like they could spend, we watched them, they could spend so long just discussing an issue without getting angry, without without getting annoyed at each other. It was just purely discussion back and forth where like I know that some adults would have, would have reached the point of frustration. And these kids just, they really do just ease into it so beautifully. Um, but no, we're just finding that in our school and all the different areas that people are just grateful for the voice that people's main thing is they just want to be heard. They just want to know that someone's heard what they have to say and that someone is listening to them. Someone understands what they're feeling and what they're thinking. So we've found that everyone's so far really embraced it.
the queue is open for comments or questions. Go ahead, Lori. You said that many of the kids had never been to any traditional schooling before. Where, where did they come from? Or what kind of program? Um, so we've had a lot of students come from the homeschooling environment. Um, and a lot of those parents were involved in that, that early setup process because they were looking for another choice. Um, homeschooling wasn't necessarily the choice that they, they wanted, but the other options weren't what they wanted. So um, we're finding that a lot of like the homeschooling community has been a big part of our intake. Um, simply because they're, they're grateful now to have, I guess, that homeschooling feel, but where they're not in charge of doing it all, I guess. So, yeah. So does the homeschooling group incorporate sociocracy into their programming as well? Or is there crossover? Well, you said there's crossover between the communities, but is there education happening for adults in between the two groups? Um, well, I know this, the, the homeschooling community is very, um, like they do work as quite a, social social mm. community um we we're looking at links and things like that and how we can i guess work with these groups we have considered things like like day schools for thank you homeschooling kids where we could bring them in to experience what really inspiring do. yeah so that they could come in and just have a have a session with some other kids some new kids and things like that so we're looking at options um we do have quite big ideas and we need to sometimes just slow ourselves down because we are brand new we've only been up and running for a term but all of that sort of stuff is in in our pipeline where we've got it all happening thank you go ahead john Hey, sorry again for arriving late. Um, how, how many students do you have and how did you find out about sociocracy? So we have um, 15 students. We've got multi-age, so we're from prep to year three, which is roughly four years old to eight years old. Um, I guess sociocracy, we kind of, we were looking at democratic schools. So we do identify as democratic, but we found very quickly that um, especially with the student circle model that we're using that we weren't in fact we weren't majority rules we were we wanted consent from everyone so um, it was basically just us researching and looking and reading and looking at other companies businesses schools and and seeing how they do things and what works for other people that was kind of how we we came into this mm -hmm. 